<laughs> With the Flame of the End as a nickname, Iori Yagami was introduced to KyoF as the hero's rival, a selfish sadist with the sole purpose of killing Kyo. But is that really all what this character about? Or is there more to Iori that makes him a much deeper person and even a better hero? Before we continue, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and share it with your friends, that would really help the channel grow in. Iori is the heir of the Yagami clan, formerly known as the Yasakani clan. I already talked about their history in the Orochi Saga video. If you haven't seen it, link in the description. But to keep it brief, hundreds of years ago, the Yasakanis made a blood pact with Orochi to gain more powers in order to defeat their enemies, the Kusanagis. Then they renamed themselves as the Yagami clan. As a result of this cursed pact, all Yagami members were destined to die at a young age and each mother to die in childbirth. Iori inherited this fate as well and was tormented by it since his young age. Maybe that's the reason why he shows no interest in his family's past and chooses to ignore his duties as an heir of the Yagami clan. Contrary to his reputation as a rude and sadistic person, Iori actually dislikes violence and avoids gaining enmity needlessly. Instead, he prefers spending his time playing his bass guitar with his band. But when it comes to his arch enemy and rival, Kyo Kusanagi, Iori is a different person. His hatred for the Kusanagi heir has no limit, and their clan's past doesn't seem to be the cause at all. Iori just doesn't like Kyo. He seems to enjoy fighting him and would do anything to see him burned with his flames. That is why when Iori knew that Kyo was participating to the Kyo F95, he saw it as the perfect opportunity to defeat his rival, despite the fact that he doesn't like the King of Fighters tournaments and considers them boring. One day, Iori came to Billy Kane dragging the body of one of Geese's assassins who wanted to test the strength of the red-headed fighter. Impressed by Iori's power, Billy offered him to join the KOF with him and the ninja Eiji Kisaragi. Each one of these three warriors had some kind of rivalry with another participant of this tournament. Billy was sent by Geese to punish Terry Bogard for defeating him in the past. Eiji wanted to surpass Ryo and all the practitioners of the Kyokugenryu Karate, and of course, Iori desired nothing more than destroying Kyo, and so he accepted Billy's offer with the condition of being the leader, then presented themselves in the competition as the fittingly named rivals team. However, losing against Team Japan ended their adventure in the tournament. But before they part in their separate ways, something unexpected happened when Kyo and his team defeated Rugal. Humiliated by his loss for the second time, Rugal tried to use more of the Orochi powers he was given by Genitz, but since he wasn't originally a descendant of the Orochi clan, this act ended up killing him. Feeling the dim presence of Orochi triggered something in Yori. For a brief instant, he lost control over his body, and for no apparent reason, he attacked his teammates, injuring them severely. This was the first hint to the dark secret that Iori hides, a secret known as the Riot of the Blood. The next year, he was visited by two mysterious women, who introduced themselves as Mature and Vice. They invited him to enter the tournament if he wanted to have his revenge against Kyo since he will be there as well. Iori only accepted when the two women submitted to be his servants, but in reality Mature and Vice were members of the Hakishu and were sent by their leader Genitz to bring Iori to Kyoev so he can gather all the heirs of the three clans that defeated Orochi in the past in one place and crush them once and for all. When Kyo's team made it to the finals, Genitz made his entrance and was ready to attack. Iori decided to team up with his enemy Kyo and the host of the tournament who also was the heir of the Yata clan Shizuru. They fought Genitz and succeeded to defeat him. On the brink of death, Genitz asked Mature and Vice to help him, but the two women betrayed him. Apparently, they always secretly hated Genitz and liked Iori's company during the competition. 
as a response, Gerrit activated the right of the blood in Iori, and before he understood what was happening to him, he attacked his companions without warning and killed them. His relationship with the two women did not end there, however. Every night, Mature and Vice haunted Iori's nightmares, mocking his inability to defeat Kyo, and with every passing day, he is filled with a sudden hate and rage as he senses the wild Iori within him growing stronger. He did not participate to the 97th edition of KOF and just watched from afar the competing teams beating each other up. But when Kyo and his friends made it to the finals, Iori could no longer simply watch. He felt the blood boiling in his veins, and as his consciousness faded away, his alter ego, Wild Iori, took control over his body and attacked Team Japan. After a ferocious fight, Kyo's team barely managed to subdue their enraged opponent. Once he regained his consciousness, Iori learned that the Neo Faces team, who turned out to be the remaining heavenly kings of Orochi, are the ones who triggered the riot of the blood in him. Iori decided to team up with Kyo and Chizuru once again and defeated Yashiro's team, but it was too late, for Orochi has already gathered enough energy to reincarnate in Chris and attempted to destroy the three clans' heirs at once, but the trio successfully defeated him as well. It was then when Orochi decided to use his last card. He activated the right of the blood in Iori, hoping that he would turn against Kyo and Chizuru but he underestimated the Yagami air. Not only Iori resisted Orochi's control with his sheer willpower, he also used the strength he was granted by the state and turned it against Orochi. He subdued the demon by the neck and prevented him from moving, giving enough time to Kyo to deliver the death blow to Orochi and to finally be sealed by Shizuru. The next few years, Iori showed little interest in the KOF tournaments and content himself with watching the games from the shadows. It wasn't until the 2001 edition when he was asked by the agent Seth to join his team, arguing that he would have his chance to fight Kyo during this competition. Iori accepted Seth's offer, but not before making it clear that teamwork was irrelevant for him. At the tournament's conclusion, he abandoned his team and snuck in the spaceship with Kyo that led them to Ness headquarters. Once there, he teamed up with k Kula and his eternal rival in order to put an end to Ignis and his cartel. When the satellite crashed in the ocean after the death of Ignis, Iori and Kyo separated themselves from the rest of the group and engaged for the umpteenth time into a fight of which nobody knows the winner. Shortly before the 2003's edition of KOF, Shizuru demanded the help of Iori and Kyo to investigate the recent suspicious activities concerning the seal of Orochi, but both men didn't agree to team up with each other until the end of the competition. At this time, they found Shizuru who just broke free from the control of a group called Those from the Past and injured from her fight with k team. But when she was going to repair the broken seal, Ash Crimson, the newcomer to KOF, attacked her from behind and stole her secret treasure. Then he threatened the Yagami heir that he was going to be next. Iori replied with an attack, which Ash avoided easily, then disappeared, leaving the two warriors frustrated by this turn of events. In the next tournament, Iori decided to ally with his rival from the start and stop the sinister plans of Ash and those from the past. They were joined by Shingo, who replaced Shizuru this time. The Kusanagi Yagami team made it to the finals and defeated Shion and Magaki, the two organizers of this edition. They learned that, just like in 97, this year's tournament was held for the sole purpose of gathering enough energy to awake Orochi. Because of the demon's growing presence, Iori once again fell victim to the uncontrollable riot of the blood state and nearly killed Kyo and Shingo. If it wasn't for Ash, who appeared from thin air, attacked Iori and stole his Yasakani jewel, the sacred treasure holding the power of his purple flames. 
Years have passed and Iori adapted to the absence of these flames. He paid a visit to Shizuru and asked her if she could use her powers without her treasure. Unfortunately for him, Shizuru was unable to use her powers without the mirror of Yata. She also told him that with the absence of the Yasakani jewel, he can be free from the curse of Orochi and finally have a normal life. But Iori was uninterested in rectifying his family's mistake and before he left, he promised the young woman that he will bring her back her mirror. Shortly after, he was visited by Mature and Vice, but this time it was not in his nightmares. For some reason, the two women could materialize in the living world and had the intention to stop Ash and those from the past from stealing the power of Orochi. And since they had the same enemy as Iori, they convinced him to join them for the next competition. When Ash sacrificed himself at the end of QOF, he left behind him the two sacred treasures for Iori and Shizuru. Holding the Yasakani jewel in his palm, Iori was told by Mature and Vice that he can still refuse the treasure. That meant no more right of the blood or dying at a young age. He would be totally free from Orochi's curse once and for all. But Iori didn't care about that. All what was important for him was to have the necessary means to defeat Kyo. And so he decided to reclaim his treasure and his flames with it then went straight forward to challenge his rival for another undecided fight. With the creation of the entity known as Verse, Iori was intrigued when he sensed the souls trapped within it. It was then when his ghost teammates appeared to him one more time and invited him to join the King of Fighters edition hosted by Antonov. Once Verse destroyed, he knew that one of the souls that were released was Orochi's. He warned Vice and Mature to not try to stop him from stealing Orochi, but the two women had no intention to do so anyway. He followed the soul all the way to Hungary and found Orochi in a weakened state. He was immediately joined by Kyo and Shizuru. Then the three fighters combined their forces and destroyed Orochi once more. One popular belief about Iori is that he is related to a character from another SNK game, the Samurai Showdowns, Genjuro. There is no denying that there are many similarities between the two fighters, like the hair color, the rude attitude, and the fact that they are both the rivals of the main protagonists of their respective games. However, SNK refutes any relation between the two characters. Iori Yagami fights with ancient martial arts based on clawing strikes. It is the same technique that his clan used during their war against the Kusanagis. Combining this fighting style with pure instinct, Iori proved, especially during QF13, that he is a very aggressive and dangerous individual even without his flames. Speaking of his flames, the Yasakanis wield pyrokinetic powers. Just like their rivals, they originally could create and manipulate crimson flames. It wasn't until they sold their souls to Orochi that their flames turned purple, a mark of their cursed pact. But the change is more than just cosmetic. The purple flames has the sacred ability to put enemies in a stasis-like state, preventing them from moving and open from upcoming attacks. This can also be witnessed with Orochi Chris, a character that can create and manipulate purple flames as well. Iori has one more card under his sleeve, his ability to enter the right of the blood condition. While in this stage, his strength and speed are drastically increased, he becomes totally berserk and very hard to predict. However, he loses almost all sanity he has and attacks anybody near him, ally and foe alike. Because of this uncontrollable state, Iori has the bad reputation of betraying his companions. Many characters who teamed up with him ended up either dead or severely injured. Although he can be sympathetic to those who he cares about, he fears that the wild Iori within him harmed them. He seems to have trouble knowing which identity is actually his and suffers from a slight identity crisis. This is the reason why Iori is always distant and dismissive towards the others and prefers to live as a lone wolf. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
give it a thumbs up if you did, and why not consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.